This is Geometry, Chapter 11, Section 1, in which we will study areas of parallelograms and triangles. Okay. Any kind of parallelogram we have, you can always find the area of it by multiplying the base times the height. Okay. The formula would then be A equals B times H. Notice here the height is the distance between the two bases and it's always perpendicular to the base. Okay. If I drew in a line straight across here, that would not be the height because it's not perpendicular to the base. Okay. This would be a height because it's perpendicular. In the special case of a rectangle, which I know a lot of you are thinking, I thought the formula was length times width. In a rectangle it is, because the length and the width are perpendicular to each other. Okay. There's a rectangle. The width here and the length here are perpendicular to each other. Here, the sides are not perpendicular, so you need the height. So let's find a couple of areas and some perimeters because we can. Now you'll notice they did not give us the height. And that's reason for us to have a panic attack, right? Wrong. Because we know heights are perpendicular to the base, we can do Pythagorean theorem. 8 squared plus h squared equals 17 squared. Doing a little Pythagorean cleanup, we find out that the height is 15 centimeters. So now we can get the area. 15 for the height times 21 for the base. And my calculator tells me it's 315 square centimeters. Now for the perimeter, all we need is the four sides. I have two sides that are 21, and I have two sides that are 17, which adds up to 76 centimeters. Okay. Let's do another one over here. In this case, we already have the height. We know the height is 24, and the base of the parallelogram is 23. This 7 is not part of the base. It's part of extent, the line extended from the base, but it's not part of the actual base of the parallelogram. So we can get our area right now. 24 times 23 is 552 square feet. Now if we want to find the perimeter, we need to know this other side. Well, looks like another job for the Pythagorean theorem. So we'll do a little Pythagorean work and we find out that the other side is 25. So then, like we did before, I have two sides of 23 and two sides of 25, which makes a total of 96 square feet. And I intentionally made this where this 23 looks a lot bigger than this 25 to draw attention to it for you that, again, you can't trust your lying eyes. You can't look at it and say, well, that's got to be a smaller answer because it's smaller than the 23. They don't always draw the pictures to scale. So I just wanted to draw your attention to that. Now, sometimes they'll give us parallelograms and we'll need to use trig to figure out some of the information, in this case, the height. But that's okay because we have a right triangle right here. From this 60, H is the opposite side, 12 is the adjacent, that sounds like tangent to me. So doing a little punching in my calculator, you'll want to make sure the calculator is in degree mode. Okay, some of the other classes, if you're using the calculators in my room there, use those and they need radian mode. So you'll want to be watching out for that. Now we have our height. And our height times our base gives us our area.
Now, a triangle is nothing more than half of a parallelogram. I could put an identical triangle right here, and it would form a parallelogram. Well, now I know the base, and I know the height. I can find the area of the triangle multiplying half the base times the height. Now, it's up to you how you want to do this. If you want to do half times the base first, and then take that answer to the height, that's fine. If you want to do base times height first, and then take half, that's the same either way. And again, height is always perpendicular to the base. So they're going to throw this at us for us to find the area and perimeter of the triangle, and the triangle is the solid one here. Okay. Well, to find the area, we're in business. To find the perimeter, we need this other side. So let's figure out that other side first. And you guessed it, Pythagorean theorem gets us to this side here, this unknown side, is 40.361 inches. So finding the perimeter is a piece of cake. Just add the three sides that we need to get our total, air, uh, total perimeter. Our area is one half the base. Well, the base is 19, and the height is 30. The 27 does not figure in as part of the base. It's an extension of the base, but it's not part of the actual base. So a little calculator work gets us our area. Be careful not to fall for that and throw that into your base, because that's what the uh, powers that be try to trick you with. Now let's look at one where we have a little bit of algebra involved in the problem. They tell me that the base of a parallelogram is twice the height. And the area is 72 square feet. Our job is to find the base and find the height. Well, we know the formula for a parallelogram. The area is base times height. It says the base is twice the height. So if the height is x, then the base would be 2x. And we know area is 72. Well, now this we can clean up. Divide by the 2, take the square root. Yes, I know when you take the square root, you also get a negative 6. But we're talking about a length of a side, and you can't have a negative side length. So we'll just discard that answer. Well, x represented the height. The base was twice that, so the base would be 12. Okay. One last thing we need to look at. They're, they throw these in just to give you the information to get you to thinking about it. Okay. Uh, postulate 11.1, called the area addition postulate, says if you have a shape, whatever region you have, its area is equal to the area of the parts of it. If you cut it into pieces, find the area of each piece, and then add it together, that would be the area of the whole thing. Okay, you've known that for a long time. Now it has a name. And our second postulate, they throw in just to, again, get you to think about something. If two figures are congruent, then they have the same area. Never would have dreamed of that on our own, would we? Two things that are identical in every way have the same area. Hmm. Never would have believed it. But now you have it. So we did a little bit of area work. A little parallelogram and a little triangle. Pythagorean theorem was our friend. If you had questions along the way, hopefully you wrote those down. Bring them in with you, and we'll see you in class.